Hello, Kate Nichols from UKH. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this um, vlog, Hospitality Talks. Um, now, the majority of people that are watching this or, or listening to this will know exactly who you are. Um, but for those people who have been living in a cave for the, for the last few years, um, could you just explain to them exactly who you and UKH are? Okay, so I'm Kate Nichols. I'm Chief Executive of UK Hospitality, and that's the national trade body that represents the whole of the hospitality sector, pubs, bars, restaurants, hotels, contract catering, visitor attractions, the whole gamut. And my job is to be the voice of all of those businesses and employers in the sector to government and to other key stakeholders and to champion the needs and concerns of the industry and support the businesses within it. Thank you very much much. So what I want to do is just ask you sort of three three questions as we have done um, consistently throughout this blog. And the first one I want to ask is, what's the current situation within UKH? I mean, when, when did this all start ramping up and what changes did you have to make immediately as a company? Okay, so this started to really ramp up for us as an issue back in end of January, sort of 20th, 28th of January, round about that week when it became apparent that there was a big issue in terms of tourism and we were looking at it from a tourism perspective and the hotels were starting to see an effect when we had restrictions on flights. So we were working with government and monitoring that situation as to what was happening in China and how much the government thought this might lead to a, a pandemic. And I think that's sort of a salutary reminder that this has gone from zero to a tsunami hitting the industry in the space of two months. And actually, for most of the businesses we represent, it really hadn't crossed their radar for, for about two weeks, um, uh, uh, probably the last two weeks. So we started to look then at what was going to happen? What did we need to get prepared? What did we need to do? And it changed some of the issues that we were talking to government about. And it certainly changed our lobbying in advance of the budget. Uh, and then obviously, like other businesses, we're now all scattered across London. We're all working remotely. We're all yeah. doing that. But it's since around about the 7th of March, for the policy team, this has been the only issue they're working on. That's the only issue we're talking to government about. Uh, and it's been almost 24 7 since the 7th of march the rest of the, the organization on the commercial the events the membership support side again totally shifted towards just dealing with coronavirus and providing that support and guidance to members and making sure we've got that flow through to businesses so they've got the best possible advice okay so as a business then you've obviously had to make adaptations to mainly focus on coronavirus does that mean that everything else takes a total back seat or are you actually juggling more plates than, than ever well as far as the government's concerned everything else has taken a back seat i mean yes there's things chugging along in the background uh, but the whole of government is almost on pause while this goes through so in addition to that there are discussions that are still happening about migration uh, there are discussions that are still happening about Brexit and food supply. Those seem a very long time ago, but they are still there in the background. And clearly for our members, it's about how can we provide member support to them at this critical time? Because this is the time when a trade association really comes into its own. Lots of members don't realise why they might need a trade association or what a trade association does. And then a crisis like this comes along and, and everybody wants to be in the lifeboat and, and to have the support and to, to have that communication. So it's a different way of communicating. It's different issues that we're focused on, but it's the same principles. Mm. And can you just, just give me a bit of an outline as to, and as you say, trade associations have come into their own in this situation, whether it's the lobbying, whether it's the support. And we, we spoke to Steve Alton at the BII a couple of days ago. Can you give me a bit of an overview as to what support is actually available through UKH? You know, I mean, I know that I know all the fantastic work that you guys do, but perhaps there are people out there that are looking at this and thinking, well, should I become a member of UKH? And if I should, why? You know, what support is out there that's specific to this situation for them? Well, we are talking to government on a daily basis. So we're getting a download from the officials about where they're moving to and what support might be available and how people can work through the schemes that the government has put in place. So we're then providing frequently asked questions, advice and information. There's a free website page on our website that's dedicated to coronavirus and has had all the information that's come through from government. 
And obviously we're looking at the breadth. So it's finance, it's about workers, it's about employee support, it's what those individuals can get, and it's how you can manage your business, uh, as well as linking in with some of our partners who are providing services around uh, finding additional work for workers who are made redundant, uh, training and uh, website uh, and on online support uh, as well as mental health and pointing people in the direction of the charity so it's a complete 360 business support service which we mm -hmm. do in any case for all sorts of issues but now it's just there so we will go through the government guidance we'll work out in, as well as helping to shape it we'll work out what it means for hospitality businesses we'll give them advice on how to apply it to their business mm -hmm. um, and we've got a daily alert that's coming through with the most up-to-date information so instead of needing to go to a, an HR advisor or a, an accountant, you can come and you've got information that's straight from the horse's mouth of what the Treasury is saying. By all means, check it with your legal advisors. But we've also got 24 hour free legal helplines for businesses. Mm -hmm. OK, and just moving on to, to that, that crystal ball idea of the future and, and what it has in store. I mean, none of us can possibly predict that at this stage, but what do you see changing within UKH because of the situation that we all will have lived through? Do you think that as a as, as an as a trade body you'll do things differently, or do you think there's any lessons to be learned from that? I think the lessons to be learned and what I'd like to take forward are the kind of support networks and WhatsApp groups and the constant communication that we've been able to instigate with our members. Um, in a trade body, you always have a, a small number of people who are really, really active and are constantly talking to you and at you and others who are not so well engaged. And we've, we've managed to set up structures which allow people to, to have a touch point within the association, uh, which I want to carry forward so that we can keep representing what the grassroots want. Um, and I think then it'll be about moving towards the recovery. What do we need to do to put in place before those lockdown conditions are lifted? What do we need mm. to put in place to support those businesses going forward? How can we get them ready to ramp back up? And how can we make sure the government isn't making things worse for us when we get out of this recovery period and has the support package there for long enough to benefit hospitality? Because one thing's for sure, if we went into it at the 28th of January, sort of a month, two months before the rest of the economy, it's going to be a month or two months before we fully recover and come out of it, before consumers break those habits again and, and come back to feeling comfortable about eating and drinking out and travelling. So we're going to need support for longer if we are going to be the force for good that we can be in our communities going forward. OK, and going forward and, and recovery and green shoots of recovery and all these phrases that I've been hearing, which are, you know, it's obviously far too soon to really know how that's going to pan out um, in reality. But what, what is the new normal? What do, you, what do you think the future actually looks like for the hospitality industry? I think in the short term that customers will have got used to doing things locally. And I think that they will go back to uh, going out and, and traveling and doing stuff eventually. But I think they will continue to, to look local. Um, I think there's also a focus by consumers in this short term period. And I don't think it'll necessarily last as long as we might hope. But I think they will look at corporate social responsibility and who has been a responsible business. And I think that has been a fundamental change in the way that the de debate and dialogue has been had both with government mm -hmm. and going forward. And, you know, sort of having Rishi Sunak talking about um, the way we behave in this crisis will define us for a lot longer when we come out of it. Mm -hmm. I think that will be carried over uh, and consumers will continue to like to see that and to know what did those businesses do. How long that lasts, I don't know. But my guess is that we will go out to our local independent businesses and our local favourite restaurants, whether they're chains or independents, more willingly than we will to, to travel further afield and go for the experiential. So I think it'll take time before that comes back and it'll take time before people are comfortable going out in mass gatherings again, because it takes six weeks to make a habit or break a habit. Um, and we're going to be in this situation for a lot longer than six weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Kate. Thank you so much for sparing us the time because, uh, as everyone knows, you're incredibly busy at the moment. And on behalf of the entire industry, thank you for all your hard work. Um, and thanks for giving me the time today. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks.